Silminäkiässä tänään. They feel that this area is just like a war zone. A lot of the youth have seen their dads get shot, their uncles get shot. Rotu ratkaisee, kun järjestelmän rattaat jauhavat Yhdysvalloissa. When you're in this system, this system is the greatest nightmare ever. We have to do more than elect one person for racism to be over in American society. We had some of our officers observe a young man on a motorbike. They attempted to pull him over with their lights and sirens. He refused to pull over, so they ended up going into pursuit. It ended right here in front of his mother's house. He was trying to make it home, but we ended up taking him into custody. Was there any gun involved or anything? He did not have a gun. The officers observed him in one of our public housing developments. A short time later, they observed him in a different public housing development. They believed there was a possibility that he was going to commit a crime or a shooting because he went from one development to the next. There's been some controversial shootings over the past week, and they thought he was there to do harm, which is why they attempted to pull him over. Eteläinen Los Angeles on jopa maailman mitassa erityisen pahamainista seutua. Päällisin puolin ja päiväsaikaan alue on lähes idyllinen. Vihreyttä, matalia taloja ja leveitä katuja. Rotusuhteet ovat jälleen kärjistyneet. Mielenosoitus vaatii loppua poliisin harjoittamalle väkivallalle, josta täällä ja muualla Yhdysvalloissa on tuoreita esimerkkejä. Italialaisen taiteilijan rakentamat tornit ovat Vatsin kaupungin osan maamerkki. Elokuussa 50 vuotta sitten Vats koki rajut rotumellakat, jotka jättivät 34 kuolonuhria. Epäluulo ja vihamielisyys poliisia kohtaan ei näytä puolessa vuosisadassa haihtuneen. It personally has become worse. Uh, there's a great disconnect between law enforcement and this community. Uh, uh, they are more prone to shoot first than to uh, gain or seize control of an environment. Uh, two young men uh, were killed for no reason. Uh, both had mental disorders. Uh, the police department never once tried to sequester the situation. They had no guns, they posed no fear, they posed no threat, but yet they were shot down and killed. And the problem was none of these officers have ever been brought to trial, which in fact is murder. Young men and even women that have been killed, there's no real uh, intense interest in investigating the cause, the effect of what happened in the case. In, in, in other communities, rural communities uh, that are less uh, populated by African Americans, there's a very intense uh, investigation that goes on. People want to know uh, names are uh, brought forth. Uh, we had an officer that killed a young man, and they wouldn't even give us his name. We're in Jordan Downs, which is a public housing development in the community of Watts. 
And then in 1965, when we had the Watts riots, a lot of the local businesses moved out of the community because of fear, because they lost money, and those businesses never came back. So when you drive through this community, you won't see a sit-down restaurant. You won't see a movie theater. You won't see a boys and girls club or a community center. And there's only one grocery store within the community of Watts. And that's because the businesses did not feel safe to be able to come in this community and conduct business. Better. You feeling better? Much better. Good. Much better. I'm glad. Okay. See, I got my tabs on you. Ah. <laughs> Take care. Amada Tsinkirides on itsekin kotoisin vatsista. Nickerson Gardens is the largest public housing development west of the Mississippi. It has over 1,050 units, and within those units you have multiple people living, living inside of there. From 2000 to 2011, just in these three public housing developments, we had 70 murders. Since the CSP program started, We've only had five murders. Four out of those five murders were solved within two weeks because of the relationship that law enforcement has built with the community. And the last one has not been solved yet, but we're, we know who did it and we're very close to making an arrest. There's these invisible gang lines associated with these housing developments. So Nickerson Gardens, which is the largest, we're actually driving into the front of their gym and on the walls of this gym are the names of people that have been murdered and killed due to gang violence. It's, a, it's pretty chilling when you can pull up and know that all the people's names that are on this wall were killed because of gang violence. There's still drugs, and a lot of our, our gang shootings are related to narcotics and territory rather than what gang are you from, what gang are you from. Vaikka jengi väkivalta on vähentynyt, epäluottamus poliisia kohtaan on syvä. There is a lot of mistrust against the police, and I don't blame communities like this community for having the mistrust. That mistrust comes from a time where the LAPD didn't do a very good job of building bridges with this community that comes from a time when you would have murder after murder after murder and LAPD's primary response was to come, scoop up the body and move on to the next crime without really spending time in that community and giving the community a chance to mend and heal. And what we've done to fix that is first, to apologize and say, we're sorry. LAPD didn't get it right sometimes, and we're human, and that's okay. We're sorry. Anteeksi pyyntö ei selvästikään riitä. Pellin alta löytyy 400 hevosvoimaa, mutta poliisi haittaa harrastustoimintaa kuskin ihonvärin takia. We, we get our cars like this and whatnot, and then, you know, if we see us in the street being the... But we are, they pull us over, pop our hoods, take our cars, just because, you know, find something to find about you. You know, anything just to pull you over for. What did I pull you over for? Uh, your rear view mirror is crooked, you know, and then just because. As opposed to, you know, other people, you know, they just let them go on by, you know. And then as far as like we sitting, like how we sitting here now, they'll pull up and throw the doors open and come get us, you know. Like just because, like, you know, risk us, no, no rights, none of that, none, no, none of that, ain't none of that. Then they got those guys out there who do those donuts and those zigs and those zags and stuff, you know, and they just, you know, but being pulled over and harassed. <laughs> How safe is this for you to live here? It's not. Actually, you guys are very unsafe right now. Anything could happen, you know. Somebody that don't like somebody can come by right now and interrupt this, uh, this you know, situation. You know, it's, it's chances you take, you know. Kaupungin eteläosat ovat muuttuneet latinolaisempaan suuntaan ja samalla rauhoittuneet, mutta edelleen on vaikea löytää ketään, joka viihtyisi täällä. Every day I pray and just I hope I strike it rich so I can move up out of here. I pray that I never stay in an apartment again. I want to move in my own house, like a house. This area is crazy, but it you know it um, calmed down a little bit. 
It used to be worse here when I stayed here. It used to be gangbangers everywhere. They're right on the sidewalk, on the store, on the mailbox, everywhere. It just was crazy. Street walkers. And when I get to pulling up right here, I'll be like, hurry up, I'll hurry up and get my son out the car. And we run to the door like we be moving fast because you never know what happened. You never know. This is a busy street. Right now I'm in the crossroads of actually either considering it as a hobby or actually take it as a profession. I have school into consideration too, but I love this sport. So, you know, yeah. <laughs> so why did you choose this club? <laughs> I love this club. It's old school. And I used to live down the street. And I grew up around here too, so it's like my second home. Slumialueella on lohduttoman vähän harrastusmahdollisuuksia. Nyrkkeilyklubi on harvinainen keidas. This is a rough, every place you go is a rough neighborhood. No place is safe. I watch the world, I learn from the mistakes I've made in life. I used to be the kids at one time, now I'm the grandparents. And I do it every day and I tell them every day, you can do anything you want if you get up and do it. But if you don't get up and do it, you're just like somebody I know. I can't step on nobody's feet unless I step on mine first. But it's a, I guess it's quite good for the kids to come here instead of uh, doing some nasty things in the, in the gangs. Right, right. I tell them that every day. Take care of home first. You take care of home first, you always got a home to come back to. Vermont Avenue kulkee halki Los Angelesin pohjoisesta etelään. Kun pohjoisessa siemaillaan kahvia, tarjolla on myös kaikkia, mitä Kaliforniasta löytyy. Sama katu eteläosiltaan on jo kuin toisesta maailmasta. What you'll find uh, if you travel inside the lay is that you'll see lots of empty lots. You'll see um, like a liquor store like you see here almost at every corner. Uh, and it gives a message to like residents that there's no uh, incentive to build up this community. Like for us, it's, you know, just wanting to see uh, an investment brought back into this community uh, because uh, there's uh, a huge potential, uh, but we feel that that's not being harnessed uh, and that uh, they aren't bringing the type of resources, type of jobs, uh, and types of um, economic development uh, that can benefit this community. Klaus Diekon järjestö tarjoaa nuorille tilaisuuden kokoontua iltapäivisin lisäopetukseen ja läksyjen tekoon. Ennen kaikkea pois kadulta, jossa todellisuus on toisenlainen. Discrimination uh, that happens to our young men here, um, they get like racially profiled, uh, you know, they think that young men here are all like gang members. Uh, I myself has been, you know, have been like multiple times racially profiled put over by cops uh, and ask questions like, um, like what gang um, am I from? Uh, questions that you wouldn't normally ask anybody else in other parts of the community. Uh, and it, it, it absolutely has to do with race. When you police a community like this, you've got to understand the culture and where the youth come from. And a lot of the youth that live in this community have a lot of distrust and hatred towards law enforcement, and they don't know how to cope or articulate their anger. And so they lash out in different ways. They go get a gun, they get into fights, they're unable to cope and talk about the issues that they have in their community. It's also learned. A lot of the youth that grow up in this community have seen their dads get shot, their uncles get shot, and then they have to walk the same street, past the same blood stain with the candles, their airships up all night so they can't sleep, and then you expect them to go and sit in a classroom and get educated and understand what's going on when their stomach's growling because they haven't ate, they're tired because they've been up all night, and they don't know where their parent is, and they're expected to focus. And 
they're not able to do that because they're dealing with post-traumatic stress. If I see a murder happen in my community and I'm not able to talk about it or express myself, that's going to build up in me and I'm going to be angry. So when I get stopped by the police, I'm not going to care about who the officer is. I'm going to care about that badge and the uniform that they represent. So I'm going to be angry. I'm not going to want to cooperate. Oh, shit, man. Damn peachy black gangsters are at it again. I wonder who they fucked up today, man. You motherfucker! Got him. Ei-valkoisten osuus vangeista on tunnetusti suhteeton. Syynä on kolmen rötöksen sääntö, joka voi johtaa elinkautiseen tuomioon, sekä ennen kaikkea niin sanottu huumeiden vastainen sota. I sold drugs. Drugs was a big fad at that time. Uh, it was cocaine, rock cocaine. And at that time a kid could walk outside of his home and rock cocaine was every five steps. You could purchase it, you could see it, it was everywhere. It was a three-year term, so I was re released at the age of 21 years old. And from the age of 21 years old up until current, there was a revolving door of just me going in and out of the penitentiary. And to date, I blame no one, I point fingers at no one, but I understand the system, I understand the way the system is set up and it was set up for uh, impoverished youth to fail. When you're in these, this system, the system is the greatest nightmare ever. When you go into a penitentiary, uh, jail is not a rehabilitation center. They don't give you, you, you don't have access to the doctors like that. The doctors are telling you that, oh, you're just going through an emotional state but you're in a place where you have killers with people that aren't killers. You have all of these different people together. Oikeustieteen tohtori Kimberly Crenshaw on rotusuhteiden asiantuntija. Lobbying the law doesn't tell you anything about whether its consequences are just or not. You have to have a separate analysis about the racial consequences of certain laws. Um, many of the laws that helped create this racial disproportionality in the prison population are laws that have a particular kind of racial consequence. So the war on drugs, for example, um, was one law that punished individuals who were at the lower end of the drug tra uh, trade at a rate that was 100 times the level of punishment that you would get if you were at the higher levels of the drug trade. That had clear racial consequences. The law was the law, and the law was racially discriminatory. And now we know that if you've been incarcerated, that becomes a factor that negatively shapes your life chances for the rest of your life. Your life, the life of your family, and the life of your entire community. That's why the struggle now against mass incarceration to many people is the equivalent of the struggle against segregation in the 1950s and the 1960s. Tim Watkinsin järjestö on tehnyt yhdyskuntatyötä Watsissa aina vuoden 65 mellakoista lähtien. We've built thousands of units of housing. We've hired tens of thousands of people uh, to help them uh, become self-sufficient. Uh, but still, the statistics show us that Uh, the poverty in Watts is still staggering, uh, that we have one of the highest infant mortality rates in the nation right here in Watts, that we have one of the highest recidivism rates, some of the highest unemployment rates, a huge homeless problem. I'm Victor Victor, is now his 84th Street and Main, 84th Street and Main. Come on. These red lights drive me insane. George Horton, you should be responding to the shooting call on Horn. Tony Rushmore. Toisten hätä ja epäonni on joidenkin leipä. Austin Reisbrook elää rikoksista ja onnettomuuksista, 
ja kiitää tapahtumapaikoille Los Angelesin yössä. We trawl the streets of Los Angeles looking for the most action-filled footage we can get. That involves sitting in the middle of South Central, Compton, Watts, Inglewood, listening to the police radios, the fire radios, and responding to those incidents that come over the scanner. We, we get to the scene, we jump out, we video everything. Um, we then sell that footage to the TV stations. I have a digital scanner. These are analog scanners. We have about 1,600 frequencies that we monitor actively. That's why we need so many. But what we also have now, we have mobile internet where we can access Highway Patrol's website, which lists all of the crashes, accidents, and things like that. So I have that live there. Next to that, I have my phone with a Twitter feed with a lot of um, a lot of people in this area, they like to tweet about what's going on. So we monitor that actively. Quite frequently, you'll see things coming out on Twitter before you actually see it or hear it on the scanners. With a toolbox in the back, protected by one we put ourselves in the middle of danger just to get that footage. That includes getting to structure fires before the fire department are there, getting on scene of crashes before anybody's there. You know, we, we will help if we can, um, but obviously the stations want dramatic, somewhat graphic footage. The news here is about entertainment. It's all about ratings. It's not proper news. It's all about, you know, they break into the president's speech for a high-speed police chase. Confirmed driver trapped in the vehicle. It's not an overturned vehicle but it's a big incident now. They've put the crime scene tape up, which means it's now an investigation. They've freed the person from the car that's crashed into a building, so they're gonna to have to call out structural engineers. This is gonna be, be here all night now, this scene. We have everything we need now, so it's on to the next one. A simple piece of footage like the crash we just went to, that would sell for $150 to a station. For the danger we put ourselves in, they pay next to nothing. I've been in some, some really bad situations. We, um, the, the worst one that I can remember was we went to a street racing incident on Crenshaw Boulevard. And uh, we pull up on the side of the road and we're videoing out of the window. The police come over the radio saying, be careful, these guys have guns. They were ready to go in, but before the police got on scene, the kid came out with an AK-47 and he's just spraying bullets everywhere. And you can hear the bullets flying past our heads. It was it was a dramatic piece of footage. We get to incidents very quickly, and there is the moral question, you know, how can we stand there and video everything that's going on? Well, our, our motto at our company is obviously, if you can help, do that first. We're all trained first responders. We're one under being a paramedic, so we can help. Um, and you, you do, you see a lot of emotion. You treat every situation differently. You know, if you see that a family's upset, you don't go and stick a video camera in their face. That, that's not what we do. We do go for dramatic footage, rescues and things like that, but at the same time we have a respect for victims, we have a respect for law enforcement. What they do is, is very dangerous down here. They're the guys that go in. If you call 911, they're the guys that respond. You know, they have a, great, a very dangerous job to do. They don't need us going on scene, creating more hassle for them. Metro Engine 63 at a PLS ambulance door incident.
Barack Obaman valinta sai monet ajattelemaan, että roturistiridat olivat lopultakin jäämässä historiaan. Yhtä monet ovat joutuneet pettymään. When one person breaks through the glass ceiling, then the sticky floor also releases its stickiness as well. But frankly, the only thing that really happened when Barack Obama left the Senate and went to the White House is that the Senate lost um, its only African American representative at the time. So we still lived in a society um, that had dramatic dis uh, disparities. Um, a Barack Obama's presidency didn't change um, the life for the homeless black family on the corner. It didn't change the life of um, you know, the millions of people who were under criminal supervision. It didn't change the life of kids who were in segregated schools. It was a victory that was more symbolically significant than institutionally significant. We have to do more than elect one person for racism to be over in American society.